In this video, I'm going to be going over the highest possible HP in Guild Wars 1 without enemy interaction. Now you're probably wondering why I specifically said without enemy interaction. That is because as soon as you start adding enemies to the mix, it gets quite complicated, but we'll go over that later. So the first step was deciding who's going to be the primary health target. And that came quite easily because it's Warrior. Why? Because Warrior is the best class in Guild Wars 1. And, well, it has a lot of HP skills um, that other classes don't have, so it was kind of obvious. And next I thought about, you know, where would this be? And my first instinct was Urgaz. That's because you get up to 12 people in Urgaz in the deep, but Urgaz just seemed like a better idea. And I'll explain that later. I also had the idea of doing co-op missions like Unwaking Waters or Vizuna Square, but I decided against that because after looking at all the possible skills to use for this, it just seemed like it wasn't needed to have 16 people. So fast forward, deciding what the secondary profession for the warrior would be, I went through a couple ideas, but after some discussion with others, it came to the idea that it should be Dervish 100% because the Dervish not only has enchantments, but enchantments that give you health. After this, I started laying out the team idea, and it basically came down to symbiosis and how many enchantments can we throw on this dude, which turns out to be quite a lot of enchantments. So with the 12 people I had set up, it consisted of the warrior derv and mainly monks, a mesmer or necromancer, and an Ellie or two. It was, you know, a bit strange. Um, but after utilizing every single enchantment possible, I still had room left over. However, the issue was that there was no more room for elite enchantments that worked. So I was kind of limited to this. I then made a post on Reddit. Um, a few people had, you know, started looking at it and suggested some things. Turns out I missed an enchantment. Let's not talk about it. It happens. After that, I went back and made sure that I had every one possible. But then it got pushed to revisiting Unwaking Waters again, because this would add four more people possible, which is four more elite enchantments possible, which is quite a bit of health. Um, this also helps spread out the bars a bit better and made it easier for, you know, if this were to actually happen, people to not have to perfectly time everything because they're more spread out it's a little more relaxed so now we're at the stage of two teams of eight people and all the enchantments humanly possible the next step was setting up attributes armors weapons um, extra buffs like pecans cons as well as 10 percent morale boost and whatnot there was a lot of things discussed when going through this because there's a lot of areas that give extra buffs, such as the Norn bonus. Um, in certain situations, such as Energy Boon, you have the Cern title track skill, which gives more energy, which in turn would give more health. But, you know, going through all of these different things, um, I did the math for everything, and it turns out that what is currently here is basically it. The best possible scenario. Now I'm not saying that these bars are perfect as in for simplicity or ease of use they could probably be moved around between the teams but the specific necromancer skills and the specific Ellie skills have to be party based so those have to stay with the warrior and the resurrection skill. Other than attributes affecting duration of enchantments which is very helpful though not that important there's only specific builds here that will require pecans and whatnot to go through that the warrior is going to want a plus three plus one strength helm for casting his strength abilities he's going to want the max norn rank required for reaching full potential of feel no pain and he's going to want 12 earth prayers and included in all of this is he's going to want a shield with plus one strength 20% for when casting these strength skills. 
obviously he would have to recast them again if he doesn't get the plus one if you want the highest possible so it might take a few attempts but this is just on paper he would obviously be using basically almost every single pecan possible he's gonna want plus four from bonus pecans and attributes he's gonna want all the ones that give bonus health as well and as well he's going to need a vampiric weapon to kill himself it's gonna take freaking forever he's going to want to die so he can get vengeance and resurrected which will be another enchantment now during all of this he's going to be suited up quite heavily he will swap from the vampiric weapon also on the vampiric weapon he's going to want an enchant mod because vengeance works quite weird the enchantment mod is affected by the person it's being used on not by the person casting it so if he wants that extra six seconds he's going to need the enchantment weapon before he dies and afterwards he would swap to a plus 30 hp sword and after he goes through all the strength skill casting he would make sure that he's on a shield with plus 45 while enchanted and his headpiece would swap to just a high health headpiece no one with runes that give minus health now also this is under the assumption the full party is going to be under a full concept each of the two parties will have a full concept next up is going to be the monk with vengeance um you're gonna want inspirational speech i found this out because you're gonna have to give adrenaline to the warrior for him to use defy pain originally this was supposed to be you know without enemy interaction for reasons i'll discuss later and i was like oh no i can't add defy pain because it takes adrenaline and luckily someone mentioned that there is a skill that gives allies adrenaline the skill is so bad that I didn't even know it existed but I'm very glad it does and it just proves my point that having tons of skills is just what makes this game fun even if they do really dumb things and he's also going to want to have great tour farmer and other enchantments next up is going to be the ritualist with these enchantments here and also vital weapon he's going to want plus four headpiece for communing and he's also going to want plus four in pecans for the just maxed out communing as possible they are also going to want a plus one 20 percent chance on communing staff other than that he doesn't really need anything next up is going to be a monk necro this one's uh, just a pure spam enchantments uh, it has order of pain so you need to make sure that this one's in the party with the warrior then we have the vital blessing this is going to have another inspirational speech because he does need five adrenaline for defy pain despite the other enchantments the main one we're focusing on is vital he's going to want plus four headpiece prot and also he's going to need to take advantage of the plus four attribute pecans as well they're also going to want a plus one 20 percent chance prot staff mod next up is going to be the necromancer mesmer or mesmer necromancer i think it'd actually be better being on a mesmer now that i'm thinking about it let me just swap that real quick okay now that that's fixed it's just better for casting speed and duration of the shorter enchantments you're basically just going to be spamming enchantments that's all that one is and next up is one of the now multiple elementalists um you just got some maintained enchantments now for most of these elementalist bars you're going to be taking advantage of the extra effects caused by exhaustion for the first one here it's going to be magnetic aura its second one's going to be swirling aura and then the last one will be magnetic surge and all three of these you're going to be using iron mist to trigger the exhaustion it's just as little input needed as possible and it serves its purpose fine the bug with iron mist that we discovered was that the effects are not only applied to air magic but applied to every spell regardless if they target a foe or not so just casting iron mist and using the next skill will give them exhaustion meaning magnetic aura and etc will all take effects from exhaustion then the most important one of all is going to be the ranger we have fertile season which is just a big boost of health and then symbiosis which basically carries this whole concept by itself and then a couple extra enchantments you're gonna want to deck out your uh, beast mastery for this one you want to get it plus four on the headpiece and plus four from pecans making it total up to 191 per enchantment and then next up we just got another monk spamming enchantments 
Uh, we got another monk here, another one with the inspirational speech, and then we have another monk here with a derv enchantment, the last one that can even be applied to an ally. Then we have another necromancer here, this is going to be the bip. It's going to actually help the whole team with energy if he doesn't die and also spam a bunch more enchantments. Then we have another monk with more enchantments. And last, another very important one, the last Ellie, which is just gonna be some enchantments and energy boon. Now, energy boon has been interesting. So first off, you're gonna want plus four energy storage headpiece and plus four from the pecans. The Ellie is going to also want just decked out energy the big thing with energy boon was it's based off of how much maximum energy the ellie has so the question was not how much health is possible but how much energy is possible on a character now obviously this is going to be on an elementalist just because of passive energy storage but there was still a lot to be done because the wiki charts were incorrect there was a lot of things from the old version of Energy Boon, so I had a lot of things to test. Basically what it came down to, I'm not going to go through all of the math with you, was the highest energy possible is 214 energy on an Ellie. Now we cannot hit 214 in this specific scenario, but we can hit 186 energy, which will provide a whopping 744 health given. And it's an enchantment, so you gotta count Symbiosis on top of that. Just if you're curious, a maxed out energy boon would provide 856 health to the target and yourself. And that's basically the whole team comp. And what it's gonna give is 18,634 health as the highest health possible in Guild Wars 1 without enemy interaction. Now, for the last part, I'm going to be discussing the without enemy interaction part. If you include enemy interaction, it gets very weird RNG fest and just difficult. But I will go over it because it does actually allow higher health. So this was suggested whenever the idea was still to be an Urgaz. You drop an enchantment on the warrior for smooth criminal and you steal permanently maintainable enchantments. There's actually a couple of them in Urgaz. Having 16 people just outweighs that completely. You can still apply that to Unwaking Waters. And yes, Unwaking is better than Vizuna. I checked the enemies, it just is. So the setup's gonna be this, basically, if you're doing enemy interaction. You'd swap the plus 45 health on the Warrior's Shield for a plus 60 while hexed. As I said, you drop for Smooth Criminal. The Monk would swap to Slash Mesmer. He would now take Reverse Hex because that's an enchantment, but it requires removing a Hex. And he would take Smooth Criminal and a couple other Mesmer Steel skills to even out the RNG a bit. The only skill the Monk needs to steal is Order of Apostasy from the Necromancer. This will be another enchantment. However, the Warrior is going to have to steal three. Yes, this is where the RNG fest comes in, boys. There's three enchantments that we're gonna work out for the warrior. It's going to be Aura of Restoration, which is gonna last 60 seconds regardless. With the lowest rank possible with Smooth Criminal, it's only gonna last 10 seconds. So the plan here would be cycle through this as quickly as possible. You can use Dragon Seals to refresh skills when needed. He can rack up DP. Uh, one of the other monks can bring like rebirth or use a rest scroll, whatever. After he got Aura of Restoration, he would use it. Then he would want to steal Air Attunement, which is going to last a nice solid 36 seconds with zero air magic. And then the last skill, none of the other enchantments are going to last long enough for any of them to be beneficial. Any of them can be stolen. The best would be using an assassin to get shadow refuge or shadow form. And with this, you now have five extra enchantments on the warrior and plus 15 more HP from the shield. But to get this to all work out, getting the right skills, the timing would be insane. You know, not getting an enchantment stripped. It's just, it's a lot. It, let's just, it's a lot. That would mean technically the total possible HP and Guild Wars 1 would be 19,604. Technically. But I'm just going to stick with 18,634 without enemy interaction. Now, I am human. Some of my math might be wrong. 
I don't think I missed any skills or tactics. If I did uh, miss anything or anything's wrong, please let me know. I will not be afraid to fix this. And hopefully I can get, you know, enough people together to go for this one day. It would be interesting, and thanks to all those who have helped. I'll put all my math at the bottom for anyone who's interested. And have a nice day.